I don't want to do this today. I don't want to do this right now. I just want to sit on the sofa and have a wine, right? Or have a beer or have a whatever, fill in the blank, coffee, tea, whatever it is your preference. But the thing is, we started our businesses so that we could provide for our families or pay off our bills or contribute to our household income or to take special adventures or trips or be able to just be our own boss, right? So let's find out how to get you back in love with your business. Hey, 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 everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren Kidd. I am a business strategist for the Busy Mompreneur. I teach moms how to start, run, and scale their online businesses so they can be present in their kids' lives. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. New content comes out every Monday at 9. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you. Big heart. Um, we love having you here, and we love giving you new content. So we are going to talk about how to fall back in love with your business today. I've heard this again and again. I've gone through it myself. Sometimes your business just drives you bonkers. Sometimes you feel like maybe you're just not getting anywhere. Sometimes you just get really frustrated and there's so much to do, right? There's just so much that goes in to running a business and managing your mompreneur life and your mom life and your, your spouse and your kids have all these activities and then <gasps> mom is no time for herself. So what happens? What happens during the starting and growing phases, huh? You're just, you don't really see that momentum right away because it takes time to grow a business, right? And sometimes it just becomes too much and we just put a pause, uh, done, right? Stop productions. <laughs> we just stop working or we just put a pause on it. We give up. We just, bleh. it's no longer fulfilling us, right? We're just like, hi, I don't want to do this today. I don't want to do this. Right now, I just want to sit on the sofa and have a wine, right? Or have a beer or have a whatever, fill in the blank, coffee, tea, whatever it is your preference. But the thing is, we started our businesses so that we could provide for our families or pay off our bills or contribute to our household income or to take special adventures or trips or be able to just be our own boss, right? So let's find out how to get you back in love with your business. I have been there. I absolutely have been here in the last five years, five years that an entrepreneur has been a business entity. I have seen my fair share of roller coasters and I help you guys try to avoid those roller coasters. Inevitably, we are all gonna go through times where we're just like, ah, I hate everything. <laughs> and that's okay. If you haven't already done so, you can go check out some of the how to manage your stress and how to manage the mom and mompreneur life videos. I will make sure that they are tagged below to really help you work through those terrible, I'll say terrible times. But let's just say for, you know, the purpose of our video, you're just like, I'm done. I haven't worked my business. I don't really think I love it anymore. I'm just, I'm, I'm teetering on the edge of maybe I should quit or maybe I should try again. Let's help you figure out why, why you fell in love with your business in the first place. And then let's help you fall back in love with it. So a lot of times, again, why we fall out of love with our business is we're just overly stressed. Mom life takes <laughs> a toll on us. Our, our spouses need attention. Our children needs attention. Our children need attention. We have activities and things that we have to attend to. We've got houses to clean, meals to cook, and all that jazz. And it just piles on, right? And the thing that gets dropped is mom's business. Even though it's probably doing well or maybe was maybe leading up to something, it still becomes that heavy burden. So we're going to talk about three things that are going to really help you fall back in love with your business so that you can overcome this hurdle, right? So the first thing we're going to talk about is self-care. I know, I don't have time for self-care, Lauren. Stop talking to me about that. This is not something that I can do. I don't have any time. Okay, hear me out. So self-care doesn't mean getting in a luxurious bubble bath and having a glass of wine and some chocolate and watching your favorite Netflix movie. Although while we would all love to do that consistently, let's be realistic. It's just not, it's just not something that happens often enough, right? It doesn't happen often enough. What I'm talking about for self-care is I mean getting up out of your office and going for something as simple as a walk. Take your kids to the park and just walk around. While they're playing on the playground, just walk. Breathe in that fresh air, 
get a change of scenery, get some vitamin D on your skin. That glowing sun is going to do your complexion wonders. <laughs> Go and do something. Make sure you're hydrated. I cannot tell you, and this is a bad example because mine's almost gone. <laughs> Oftentimes I get in this really deep funk, especially when it comes to my business. And then I realize I'm probably living off coffee. I'm not enough food and certainly not enough water. So self-care can be something as simple as drinking your water, going for a walk, getting outside, seeing the sunshine. I know that things are crazy and we're inside a lot more, although I think we're starting to hatch out of our shells, right? Go outside and get that vitamin D on your skin. It could just be you sitting on your patio or in your front yard. I like to sit in my front yard. People think I'm weird in my neighborhood. I'm just like, hey. <laughs> One of my neighbors one time was like, you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm just sitting in the front yard. <laughs> we used to do that growing up in West Virginia. Down here, it's just weird. People think something's wrong. But when it comes to feeling in love with your business and wanting to actively do things in your business, you need to make sure that you are taking care of yourself physically and mentally so that you are in the right mindset, headspace, and you know, emotional space, physical space to actually focus and get things done. If you are not emotionally, physically, mentally in a, I can do this phase in your business, you're just going to be like, I'm not doing any of it. And I hate it all, right? We have all been there. So first thing, check in with your self-care. Again, not an extravagant bubble bath. Although if that's your thing, please do it. Please take that, ex it, that elaborate bubble bath. It's oh, so satisfying. If you've got a hot tub, even better. <laughs> Maybe your self-care is going for a swim. I love getting in a lap pool and just going for a little bit and just, it just all the stress just flushes away. And it's so helpful all around <laughs> mood, environment, everything just seems to brighten up once I get some of that energy, that stress kind of energy out. Maybe you go for a run. Maybe you do a workout, something, something that involves changing your scenery and improving either your health and your mind or both at the same time. Number two, find somebody who is just as motivated to succeed as you are. So find yourself a biz bestie. I know that when I started my business, one of my biz besties and I were on the exact same page and it was amazing. We had calls, we checked in with each other. What are you doing now? What are you doing here? What are you doing there? And as as my business continued to grow, I started getting mentors. I started having coaches and other people to help keep me accountable, right? I started having other people in, you know, this business network that are like, hey, what you doing this month? Hey, what are your quarterly goals? Hey, what are your, you know, what are you putting out this year? You know, what is your main focus this year, right? So they're holding me accountable. Not only am I holding myself accountable because we as a family have goals. We as a family have plans. We want to be able to do things. Um, if you guys are friends with me on Facebook, you know that we are in the middle of a move. It's exciting. We just bought a whole bunch of land and we're going to build a house that we really are excited about. We're selling our house and I'm literally surrounded by boxes right now. You're welcome. <laughs> boxes, 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 boxes everywhere. But I still have people that are keeping me accountable, keeping me motivated, keeping me on the right track, even when everything else in business is just so crazy. My list of follow-ups is insane right now, but I know that I'm going to get through them because I am still taking time for myself. This afternoon, we are going to go to swim lessons for my kiddo. I'm going to get in the pool. I'm going to do some laps and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be relaxing, right? So find yourself a biz bestie or a motivated partner to help keep you accountable as well. This is going to help you stay in love with your business more consistently because somebody else is rooting for you. Now, you may be thinking, well, I could just ask my, my, my parents or my spouse or my kids, right? Sometimes a stranger is your best cheerleader and somebody you know is your biggest hater. Now, I'm not saying that your family's a hater or whatnot, but what I am saying is sometimes it is really nice to have somebody outside of your family who can continually root you on because they are on the same path as you. This is going to help you continue that forward momentum in your business. And then tip three, delegate where you can. Now, this, you've heard this before, right? Delegate it, delegate it, delegate it. Financially, that is not always possible for people. It is just not. And I really despise <laughs> mentors out there who are just like, ah, oh, just delegate it out, pay somebody to do it. Okay. First of all, not everybody has $45 an hour to pay an assistant, right? A good assistant is going to run you about $35, $45 an hour on the low end. You're going to get your money's worth. I promise you, you're going to get your money's worth. But sometimes that's not possible. 
What I suggest, and this is what I have done, go to the local community college. Try not to do it at a university. They laugh at you. I've been there. Go to your local community college and say, hey, I have a legitimate business. Uh, this is what I do. We do marketing or we do coaching or we do web design or we do whatever. And I am looking to give college credits to somebody in this field. Get free labor. <laughs> Get somebody to help you with your business. If there's no community college close, hire a teenager. They love being on social media anyway. Um, uh, in the last city we lived in, I had um, one of my neighbor's kids help me out for a little bit. Um, and this was, again, I did have an assistant, but I needed a little bit more help and I wasn't to the point. This was three and a half, four years ago. I wasn't to the point where I could hire somebody else in my business. We were growing. But we were almost outgrown without financially having the ability to just take it over the edge. So maybe this means enlisting help around your house. Hey, can you guys switch the laundry for me? I have to go do this. Right now, my, my husband is out painting the front of the house, little spots here and there. For the most part, everything is ready to go in our house. I have been packing for the last four days. So he is handling the paintings so that I can sit here and I can batch record. You know me, I love batch recording. I'm gonna have the next eight weeks done so that our move can be transitioned, satisfied and free. <laughs> hey, I know I was supposed to do that this afternoon, but I had a hair appointment this morning. Can you just do it for me so that I can just glam out the videos, right? And that's something that I asked him to do. It's called delegating. And it's not a massive task. It's not hard. He's already home, you know, switch the laundry. Hey, can you just put the dishes from the dishwasher into the sink? Or hey, can you just clear the, clear the table? Just put them in the sink. I'll get to them later, right? Delegate tasks where you need to in order to free up that energy, free up that stress, free up the, the anxiety that you've got going around something so that you can get back to actually loving what you do in your business. Now, you could easily take these tips and just call them mom life hacks, <laughs> but they go really, really well with your business. When you're not stressed out, when you have somebody motivating you and when you're able to delegate little tasks like, hey, my husband, can you, can you do the laundry while I'm doing videos? I don't know if you can hear it. I can hear it, but the laundry is going right now. The laundry's on the other side of the closet in my office. It's not in my closet. It's like on the other side. But anyway, <laughs> I'm like, hey, can you do the laundry? Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've got to get this done. Can you do this for me? Absolutely. It's not extraneous. It's just drop it in, pump, pump, and hit the button, right? Yep, there goes the dryer <laughs> or the washer. I don't know what it is, but delegating tasks allows you to free up a little bit of time so that you can stress free, have the stress free time to do what it is that you need to do in your business. When you're overly stressed, when you have nobody supporting you, when you're doing it all at the same time, you're just not going to have the exact same passion or fire or energy that you really need and want for your business. So three ways to fall back in love with your business. Number one, check in with your self-care. Make sure that you're hydrated. Go for a walk. Get some vitamin D. Go to the beach. If you're close to the beach, it's one of my favorite ways to recharge is to just go to the beach and watch my kid run around. Two, find somebody who is motivated as you. Find a business bestie. Number three, delegate where you can so that you can have a little bit more stress-free time for your business even for yourself, right? Let's fall back in love with our businesses because I know that you have something amazing. You are amazingly special. You are individual and somebody needs exactly what it is that you have to teach and offer, right? So again, I will link the extra videos on how to manage the mompreneur life right below. Check those out. Again, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. New content comes out every Monday. And if you haven't already joined our amazingly fast growing mompreneur business group, come join hashtag mommy's on a mission on Facebook. I would love to have you with us. So I will see you guys right back here next Monday. Bye.